Hey folks, it's Lauren from Snowy's here with the Quest Grill Table 5. Hit it. It's made of a durable blow molded plastic with a rust resistant powder coated grill top and frame. It has a massive 155 kilo weight rating with a gear storage hammock underneath and loads of other features. Hold up to make sure you don't miss any of our awesome content. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Let's get back to it. So your um, grill table is just over 13 kilos. So it is quite heavy, but we'll run through uh, why that is in a minute. So it's packed dimensions is the table obviously folded in half. It's around about 60 by 60 and it's about seven and a half centimeters thick. It doesn't come with a carry bag, but it does have this heavy duty webbing, webbing strap, which is um, like riveted and really anchored in underneath the table there. So it's nice and solid. And it does have this uh, rubber grip on the webbing strap as well. And it's not a hard rubber. It's quite a nice, soft, flexible rubber. So it's really comfortable to hold. And it means your hand's not going to be slipping around um, on the carry handle either. So as we set the table up, we're going to pull it open. And there are a couple of, before I go further, you can see this little um, recess here. And on the other side, this little peg. And there's the same down the bottom. And they both uh, click into place to keep the table together when it's not in use. So once we're here, now I will just say quickly that this um, little, uh, I guess you could say hammock or gear hammock underneath the table, it does have uh, these little straps and hooks here that connect to the underside of the table. So when you are setting up your table, depending on how you do it, just be mindful that they don't, if they've come free of their little catch spot there, that they're not gonna be um, slipping through to the other side of the table like so, because then when you set the table up and it locks into place, I'll just show you that it can get caught on the other side. So just be mindful of that when you're opening it up as that has actually caught me out before. All right, so table's locked into place. So now we're gonna open up the legs and they've got these little um, push buttons here, just like old fashioned vacuum cleaner poles. And they're gonna slide into place um, with these little blue covers there, uh, which are obviously gonna be really handy for pack up. And then we do the same with the other leg like so, and then we'll just flip the table so it's right side up. So once it's set up and your legs are locked into place, you can actually use it at this height, uh, which is 55 centimetres, but there is a total of four height settings available for this table. And I'm just gonna give you an example of them on this leg here, but we're gonna finish it off at the maximum height setting so I can better show you the features. So you don't have to push anything when you are adjusting the table. It's just a matter of popping your foot on the crossbar at the bottom to keep the legs into place and holding the sides of the table and just lifting up carefully. So that's technically that first click there. That's technically the 55 centimetre height. So then we're going to go up another five centimetres to a 60 centimetre tabletop height. Then our next one is a bit of a jump. And that goes to a 73 uh, centimetre table height. And then our fourth and final height setting is that 86 centimetre mark. So I'll do the same on the other end of the table here. So that first little click is that 55 centimetre locked in. Then we've got the 60 centimetre, the 73 centimetre, and then the final is that 86 centimeter height here. Now the table has um, got a powder coated steel frame half as well as powder coated steel legs and we've also got this blow molded tabletop section and so this table is fully weatherproof and it's probably fortunate as you can see we've had a little bit of rain start here but we're going to persevere um, but it is just a really good point to make that you can leave this out in the rain. Um, obviously best practice to care for your camp gear is leave it out of the weather as much as you can but this particular table it is weatherproof so a little bit of water is not going to bother you so this side of the table here obviously being powder coated steel and having these big holes through it to dissipate heat it's a really great option for putting your camp stove on you can also wash your dishes on this section here with the water falling straight through and you're not having to stress too much about mopping up 
a lot of spills. Your powder coated tabletop, again, it's pretty easy clean. And of course, like with every camp table, it provides you with a nice solid surface for food prep uh, or anything else that you might need to use the table for. So when your table is fully set up, you've got those four leg heights that I've just mentioned, but we've got a total length of 153 centimeters and a width here of 65 centimeters. So um, I haven't finished setting up the hammock underneath the table yet, so I'll do that now. So you've got a couple of Velcro straps on the end here. You really only need to undo the bottom one uh, because the top one is going to keep that hammock up in place at the top, but it's just the bottom one that you need to worry about to create the depth of that uh, hammock or shelf underneath the table like so. And you're just gonna do the same at the back here, Velcroing that into place. So the hooks on the front of the hammock will probably stay in place when your table's packed up. But if they're not, and I uh, mentioned to you before how if they're not, sometimes they can slip through the joint of the table here. It's just a matter of hooking them back into place um, on that little tab I showed you. So as you can see now, that gives us a huge space there for um, storage underneath the table. We've got the mesh sides for airflow and the base is like got a, uh, I don't know what's in it actually, it might be a bit of core flute or potentially a nice thin bit of MDF, but that gives you a really rigid solid structure under there. It doesn't come with a weight rating, but I'm just gonna push down on it fairly hard. And you can see it does bow a little bit, but the Velcro is not, making any sounds or there's not nothing there that sort of suggests that it's struggling with that, even though it does bow a little bit. So I'm estimating you could probably put a fair bit of stuff in there. So around on uh, the corner here, we've also got this little uh, paper towel holder or potentially a tea towel holder or whatever you'd like to sort of hang off of that. And that's got a little, um, uh, I guess you'd call that a little pin there that uh, has this rubber stopper, which prevents it from swinging around and coming loose. So it's just a little bit of resistance there as you're pulling it over that rubber uh, stopper. And then you also have a second rubber stopper on this end. So if you wanna open it all the way out and sort of lock it off or anchor it off in that position, uh, that's not sort of gonna go anywhere without a, a bit of effort pulling that back in. So we've got on the front here under the lip of the table, We've got a couple of hooks here. So I'm not 100% sure what they're for, but they're identical on the other side of the table. And my guess is telling me that they're just like a utility hook. Whether or not you wanna hang bags off there or um, utensils of some kind, potentially you've got like a, a dish sponge or something on a little bit of a loop or rope or what have you. Um, so you've got two on this side and the identical two on the other side. Now coming around to the other side on the, the grill end of our table, we have this bin bag holder. So that is um, gonna squeeze into place when we're lifting it up or squeeze in on itself when we're lifting it up. And then we're gonna pop it out so it locks in on these tabs to keep it uh, nice and sturdy in this position. So you can hang your bin bag over the top here and I'm just gonna give a little bit of weight on it. So as you can see, it does sort of flex and bend. So I wouldn't wanna be overloading it too much with a really heavy bin bag, um, but it is gonna still sort of hold a fair bit of weight and, and keep your campsite nice and tidy. And then underneath that, we've got some storage pockets here. So this one at the top is quite a large uh, pocket and it does have a little Quest bottle opener there hanging on the zipper. So that's nice and long. Uh, and we've also obviously got that mesh to keep these pockets ventilated. And we've got four of these large pockets here. Now I'm pretty sure that they would be large enough for a phone. I'll just stick mine in as an example there. So, um, and then, you know, whether you, or not you're gonna put your keys or maybe even cutlery on the end here. Um, so you've got that storage pocket, which is nice and versatile. So the table itself has 155 kilo weight rating. And it's, um, so it's nice and, and solid and it can take a fair bit. So I'm gonna put a bit of a, a lean on here. So I'm putting a fair bit of weight on. There's really not much flex coming through this steel section at all. And again, I don't expect much flex in the in this um, blow molded section either. So it's a nice, sturdy, solid table. 
and we'll give it a bit of a shake test, which is what I love. I love, love a good shake test. So we'll go sort of from side to side or front to back, I should say this way. So that's not, there's no shake within the frame there at all. Like any pushing is actually just lifting it off the ground. So there's nothing in the frame that's causing any movement on side to side. So that's really solid. So now we'll go lengthways. And we've got a little bit of side to side movement, which is to be expected as that's the sort of direction that the legs um, fold out. But if I sort of give it a bit of a, so as you can see, it's actually quite a sturdy solid table, even on its highest setting. I know a lot of people think the higher a table gets, the more sort of unsturdy or unsure you can be with it. But this table is actually a really great option. So that's about it for the setup and the features. Now we're on to the pack up. So we're pretty much just going to do everything in reverse. So whilst I'm over this side, I'm just going to pop away uh, our little uh, tea towel or not tea towel. Well, yeah, tea towel or uh, paper towel holder there. And I'm also just going to unvelcro these bottom two spots and we're just going to move them up above this blue... Uh, hinge or knuckle there for the, the leg locks. So we're going to just Velcro those in place. And again, above that blue um, hinge point or leg lock there. And then around the other side, we're going to pop away our bin bag holder. And again, we're just going to squeeze in to release it over those tabs and fold that flat away. Now the next step is going to be to drop the table down. Now you don't have to push any buttons when you're lifting the table up but when you want to drop it down you do need to press the button. So this big blue uh, locking thing in the middle here is what's going to control the pins on either side. So we're going to push that down and I find personally pushing it down and giving it a slight little lift helps to release the pins a bit more than say if you're going to push the button whilst you're already starting to push down on the tabletop itself. So once those pins are released, you can drop that table all the way down to the bottom and we'll do the same on the other side. Give it a little tiny lift as we push before we drop it down. Now from here, we're going to tip the table on its side. I recommend you do that with the handle side uh, on the top when you do tip it up like so. Now we're going to keep or try and keep these little hooks locked into place. So I'm just going to sort of tuck that table in. And we've also got these two buttons. Now when they're out like this, when the table's upright, they'll drop down and lock the table into place to stop it from folding up. So when we're packing it away, they're not under resistance or anything. They just slide quite easily. So their gravity um, will pull them down when you're setting the table up. So it's just pushing those ones back in. On themselves and then releasing the legs now I showed you before these little sort of uh, these little locking pins here so we're gonna press um, both of those blue ones and push the legs in like so and they will slide back and lock into place and we will do the same again just keeping an eye on this little hook section there we'll do the same on this side we're going to push the two blue buttons and get that leg moving inwards like so. And then we'll come back to the middle here and we're going to pull our handle out, make sure that stays on the outside of the table. Our blue locking pins are obviously in because we've got a little bend here. We want to keep these hooks in place where possible because if they do come out, we know it's not that much of a big deal to hook them back in. But I'm just going to give this hammock a little adjustment because what I want to do here is keep this hard edge on the base of the hammock. I want to keep that tucked up inside the lip of this central frame here because otherwise it can actually poke out the end of the table when we're packing it up. So I'm just going to keep that tucked in like so and then we're going to swing that around and lock those clips into place. Inside. We've got a stick caught in there. There we go. So that 
is all packed up and ready to head home with you. So that's about it for the Quest Grill Table 5. You can get this at snowies.com.au.